Sugar Club! What a crowd. Hello, Sugar Club! Ah, oh, Jesus. Shh. Thank you. Hello and good evening. You're all very welcome back. It is the second part of our show. The third part of our show is where Johnny's going to try and break his duck. Six successive weeks of dud tips on Friday Night Racing. I wouldn't mind, but it's for the injured jockeys. The poor injured jockeys can't catch a break. You break a leg, you break an ankle, and then Johnny tips a loser. There was a guy at the dogs, like a very, very strong gambler, and uh, the word was like he was having a seriously bad run, and he's like... Uh, He's lost 25 bets in a row, and he goes up the bookie, and the bookie's like, like are you for real? You're going to punt me? And he goes, if you're down 25 bets in a row, what's 26? <laughs> yeah, and that's basically where we're at right now. That is exactly where we're at. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll get our tip for you in the third part of the show, which is going to be going through the card at the Dublin Racing Festival. And a reminder, we are tonight here with thanks to the Dublin Racing Festival taking place at Leopardstown Racecourse on Saturday the 2nd and Sunday the 3rd of February. 15 races, 8 grade ones, 1 1.8 million in prize money. You can get your tickets now at leopardstown.com. Two potential stars of the Dublin Racing Festival are our next two guests. They're having amazing seasons, both of them. Please give it up for Patrick Mullins and Rachel Blackmore. <laughs> Patrick, good evening. Welcome. Hi. Rachel, Hi. thanks Hi. for coming. How are you? Good, good. So, uh, we've been talking about the uh, commitment that racing folk have. You guys were up, like five, six o'clock this morning, racing in uh, Goran, and you're here tonight and done with us. So that's like a nice, quiet afternoon for you guys. Five yeah. or six o'clock is probably an exaggeration <laughs> there. Yeah. We're, we're, the, Willie's, Willie has a, we don't start riding out till eight, and Willie, it's because Willie reckons that the horse is like the lion. Right. So that's the secret. <laughs> wow, that's pretty that's sweet. Secret, yeah. uh, so um, I'm, I have to apologize on air to you, Patrick, because um, tonight's a big night around Goran. It's your local track, and when you win the Thaiassis, which most years you do, it tends to be a big party. Yeah, it's, it's your invitation only. Winning is our big local track. Um, and usually there's a great party on in Clears and Goran. Um, but uh, I've, I've nearly flied out tomorrow morning. I've flight at half six, so I said uh, it might be safer to come up here and go home if I get more sleep. Now, I don't know if everybody knows this, but you two are flatmates. Yeah, we are housemates, yeah. Uh, my boyfriend, Brian Hayes, owns the house. and Paddy Very, very, very quick to put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and Patrick is kind of leaving the line like this. I, <laughs> <laughs> and somehow I, I know exactly what he's going to say here. I pay rent and she doesn't. So yeah. I, I, I don't they're going to they're going to breed a horse together. And it's going to be called platonic. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, I didn't expect that. I was going to say that uh, escalated quickly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> We had a Skype call with you on Friday Night Racing a couple of weeks ago, and I was going to say it's a nice kitchen, but I didn't know like, when we've got the tour or not. When we have Kevin yeah, Cabana, we, yeah. we make him do a little tour of the house, but I don't know. Next time, we're going to get yeah. you to... Well, they're like brilliant to live with. Brian and Rachel, like, they get a cleaner in every two weeks, and they clean the house before cleaner comes. I mean, they're completely <laughs> freaks. So. It's not Brian, by the way. It's my boyfriend, Brian Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I said that. Oh, God. <laughs> Brian is actually going to be watching this. He's like, I just have to be yeah, so clear yeah. because people always say that Paddy lives, we live together, and yeah, it's got to be clear. That's fair enough. It's, it's, it's when they go on holiday together that they get into real stuff. It's like, <laughs> no, 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 we're just joking. I haven't, I haven't been inviting holidays yet. We're, uh, we're all about clarity in this show. I do want to talk to you, Rachel, about uh, your, your current um, race to become champion jockey. Um, Barbara said, you, uh, you're probably getting a bit bored of answering questions about this. It's like, oh, what's the story? But I mean, come on, it must be pretty amazing to be getting asked, like, you're in the running to be champion jockey. It's ridiculous. It's brilliant. Um, yeah, like, uh, it, I'm still there in the shake-up, but I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, an unlikely event, to be honest. But uh, it's just fantastic to be even, for people to even, you know, utter that sentence at this stage, uh, at any stage during the season. So, What point did you think it might be realistic to aim for that as something that you could have as a goal at the end of the season like because haven't reached that point yet to be honest yeah. fair enough like uh, uh, last year we were looking back at the stats about 119 was the the winning total so there's loads of racing to be done but like do you allow yourself to daydream a little bit about it like when when you're being driven around the country <laughs> um to be honest, it, it, it's not even something I've ever, I've ever dreamt of. It's not even something I could ever, um, you know, I, I, I never dreamt of being champion jockey. Um, I still can't see that 
happening. Um, I don't know whether that's a, a negative thing for a sports person not to be able to, you know, um, see. But look, I, I'm just delighted to be in the position I'm in, and you know, y racing is very much a, a day to day thing. Um, you know, you just, you know, you want to go day to day. You want to ride as many winners as you can on that day, and you know, you're not looking too far ahead. Yeah, okay. The the competition at the moment is um, with Paul Townend, which is a rivalry that dates back, is it a, a decade, a decade and a half at this point? We have this um, little clip, which is a home movie, uh, which you're all going to see in Jump Girls, the documentary really next week. I'm really sorry, I was surrounded by horses. I uh, did pony club and eventing and kind of went down all those usual routes. My pony was quite fast, so we decided to run him in a pony race. Um, so that was my first kind of taste into racing. But it's great dancing off from Tony coming all the time on the outside. Uh, he actually ended up riding a winner on him, beating it's Paul Town in the nose. It's a great dancing on the near side, Tony on the far side. They're neck and neck and neck and neck. It's a desperately close thing. That's one of my major highlights of my career, I think. Yeah, first winner beating a champion jockey of the future, so <laughs> it was a great day. Rachel? Just a, uh, a quick word about you, Rachel Blackmore. You hail from where? Kinnan also? Oh, yeah. yeah? Uh, talk us through that race there you now. Oh, it was brilliant. He, he just, he so much left to him at the end. He just, he went really well and I couldn't believe it. Yeah, just do first one, no? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> uh, beating Paul Turner, that's class. It's brilliant to have that, isn't it? Yeah, that that was uh, that was such a great day. Um, I remember I went racing with uh, went down racing with uh, the Doyles. Jack Doyle um, would have been would have been doing a lot of pony racing back then, and kind of family would have been friendly with Mary Doyle, and uh, that's how we kind of went and, and did it. And oh, it was it was unbelievable. Yeah, that's quite a high, I presume, winning a race like that at that age. You're like, yeah, I want to be a jockey. That's it. I want to be a jockey. Nothing else. Yeah, I, I was kind of hooked on it after that, and. Uh, it was funny, like there was a lot of, um, when you kind of go down to the pony racing down there, you know, they didn't really know who we were, were we after coming from the north with this really fast pony or what was kind of going on, but as soon as we won the race, like I think I got off and uh, like as we walked back in, didn't go to the winning post, the, the organisers knew fairly quick that we were, uh, you know, that we were New. definitely amateurs <laughs> and just we weren't coming in to take any of their... their you weren't a ringer. Yeah. That's class. When did you get addicted to racing and riding and decide, yeah, you Yeah. It's just thinking about it's taking, a, it's taking a funny turn. Um, <laughs> um. <laughs> like you didn't... <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have much choice, I guess. But uh. Uh, sure, look, uh, sure, look, the whole family is, is into it. But I know I only did one pointer race, and uh, myself and Emma went down to a local pointer race down in um, Thomastown, and I brought my uh, uh, pa Palomino mare down. Emma brought his half thoroughbred, uh, Duncan and Hustle. So the O'Farrells were there, and we thought this was great crack anyway. So we down to the start, jumped off, rode a finish, uh, straight to the finish. P Emmett won, and I finished second, delighted. Started pulling up. Next thing, the crowd starts shouting us, there's another lap. <laughs> there's another lap. <laughs> so, of course, we go on it. And anyway, Emmett still won. I finished four. So was, <laughs> he still reminds me to this day. But, uh, yeah, I wasn't quite as a... Uh, didn't have a good record like Rachel. So. Um, but, no, all, all our lives. That's, that's, it's not that it's got forced into us, but it's just it's all we did. Yeah, but the bit that you enjoy the most has to be riding winners. And, like, when do you realise that that's the aspect of this that is going to be the one that you follow the most? Winning, winning, sure, like anyone, any competitor, is winning is the kick, do you know? Um, and a, a bigger thing is when you get beat. Like, uh, you know, the day that getting beat doesn't hurt, um, it probably doesn't matter. And, uh, you know, that's as, big a, that's as big a spur on as winning, just not getting beat, like not getting, uh, you know, Nina Carver, Jamie Cowell coming and nailing you on the line, there's just nothing worse. How would you compare, like, Winning to ride in Duvan at Cheltenham in March last last March, and you're riding in the Champion Chase. Well, uh, so that's Up obviously to the point of obviously the fall, but like just this, this, the thrill you got out of riding him. Yeah, well like you know, I'd been looking enough riding before in Leperstown, and he'd won um, when Paul got injured in the first race, and same thing again. I, I'd actually prepared myself for going to Cheltenham. I prepared myself for riding him. I just said this could happen. I've seen people get injured before. No way. And. <laughs> I'm sure you have you, to. You have to think ahead, like yeah. You know? um, and I, I remember we were one day, one one year in Cheltenham, there was three or four chalky changes of Dave Casey and Briar Hill that year. I nearly got the ride on the, on his own, but anyway. But I, I had it in my head, so 
But I obviously got the ride on the goal in the goal cup. Well, Ruby got injured in, in the triumph of Abbey Seal, and then David got a fall on Briar Hill, and suddenly I was going to ride on his own, and I, I, I didn't. But I just had that in the back of my head, and I said, I'm prepared for this. So I had a plan in my head. Um, I only got the colours just literally uh, the race before. I got a quick chat with Ruby, who's lying there with a broken leg, and uh, trying to like. How are you, anyway? Wake up. <laughs> 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 and, uh, so um, and the last thing I heard as I was walking out, the Channel 4 on in the. Um, Channel 4 on in TV, which they did catch me streaking across it one day on, 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 on live feed, which wasn't ideal, but <laughs> it's a chilly place in there. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but the last thing I heard was walking out, you know, in the zone was Matt Chapman going, and Duvan, drifting like a barge. <laughs> <laughs> Filled you with confidence. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show them. Fair enough, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, but look, it was, it was actually, it was amazing. Um, we're down to start. I, I was going on the start thing, it doesn't get any better than this. Um, and what like, field like field, the yeah. first time I rode them, I just said, this is the best horse in race. All I have to do is school them around. Like it's not even a race. At the time when the horse fell, I thought, I thought, yes, I, said, I was going to win. So it's a mile from home. And looking back at it. The finishing kick that he has as well. Altior, you know, is obviously, he finishes very strong. Altior could be as good a horse you ever saw. But at the time, um, it's... Like, I've ridden some very good horses. I mean, look at Ride Fahid, look at Ride Annie Power, Under So, Sharjah, Wickle Brave. But when I mean, your man's in full flight, it's a different species. And it's so frustrating that he hasn't been able to prove that. That it's, you know, he's won the novice race. If they don't, they don't really count, it's like winning the minor. He hasn't been able to win his All Ireland. And we know the ability he has. And look, he made a mistake. He fell. He hadn't ran in a year. It was like throwing a fella into a World Cup final. There's always going to be, you're going to make a mistake somewhere. And he did. But thank God he got up. And that was my main thing when I fell, because he landed on his head. He didn't get a foot out or anything. He landed on his head, and I thought, he's, he's in trouble. But when I got up and saw him, um, that, that was fine. The, the amount of emotions you must go through from the, the thrill, split second later, you're on the ground, and one of your favourite horses like could be badly injured or even worse, and you're like, and you were trying to get over the fall at 40 miles an hour, and you're like, well, yeah. what happened there? Yeah, well, First of all, the, the ambulance and the vest both missed me, so I ended up having to walk him home. Because you can't get your butt back up in him, so I was a bit tick over that, walking <laughs> back on my horse. Um, but no, I remember thinking, you know, and you get experience with this when you when you when you when you suffer defeats and you suffer, you know, things going our ways. Um, you have to just keep keep the focus. And I knew I had a ride later on the day, a two rides, th the next two days, and so I just put it aside, and it didn't bother me. But when I came home and watched the replay. You know, it, then it's sunk in. But I think uh, it's like I suppose you're getting a foul, a match or something. You have to put it aside in the middle. Of it was Wednesday at Shelton, which is a four-day festival, so you can't be thinking about it the next day or the day after. So, um, yeah. Does that answer the question? Was there a question? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, Rachel, will you talk to us a little bit about what has been a breakout season for you? What, what's the difference this year from last year, and what level of confidence you must have at the moment? Um. The, yeah, so the biggest difference is just my, my link up, I suppose, with Henry de Bromhead at the start of the summer. Um, you know, it's all about getting into the right yard at the right time, and that just happened for me this summer. His horses were flying, and, you know, y you need to be on the right horses to be finishing in front. How does that come about? So that obviously is in the works for a little while. There's conversations going on, and you're like, yeah, that um, sounds like... Yeah, I think, I think Eddie O'Leary mentioned uh, to Henry that, uh, you know, would he try using me maybe for some of their runners down there and Henry went for it and I was very grateful for that yeah I don't know if you heard the bit a little bit earlier on where uh, your name came up and they were talking about the decision to go pro three years ago what was behind that decision what was because obviously you believed in yourself at that stage that something like this might happen for you in the future but there must be a bit of confidence and a strain of madness at the same time to go yeah actually you know what I am going to give this a go um, the, the main thing for me was I had nothing to lose. Um, I had an amateur career that was not really a career and the yard I was in was, was there to back me and you know, that's, you need, a, you need support in this game and uh, you know, f for me to, my, my weight is very good so a lot easier for me as a seven pound claimer back then to get a ride in a handicap of 9.10 than you know, expect someone to put me up in a four year old maiden. Um, point of pointing so you know it was it was just something that worked out for me and uh was it was it obvious to you at the time that this was the right thing to do or was there a no, little bit of soul absolutely searching absolutely not like plenty of people told me it mightn't be the right thing to do and but like i i you know i had a, a shark handling telling me look i'll i'll support you i'll give you rides so you know i had nothing to lose 
And I think, I think you know, what, what a lot of people maybe don't realize, a bit like, you know, an overnight success. Like, I mean, I've known Rachel since she was kind of 1920, and it took her six years to get to the point where she started getting good, you know, like, um, just that, that time. As you, as you can see from my flapping video, I was not natural. <laughs> but, like, it's so true, like, when you look at Paul beside me, like, he's, he looks, like, if you put him into a bumper the, fall of the, the very next day after that race, like, he wouldn't have looked out of place. Whereas I was absolutely horrendous, like, in every shave and form, you know what I mean? And it took me such a long time to, to get my act together, and it's only now starting to, to click into place, you know? Did you, did you model yourself on anyone, or was it just, did you just improve the experience? Just trying to model myself on, on not looking like I did back then, I suppose, <laughs> yeah. How are you but, getting um, on? <laughs> but the thing is, for, for anyone who's trying to be a jockey, it, you know, you see some lads after a year or two years, they, they just lose interest. But it might take four or five years. And I, I, it's probably the same with other sports. It might take four, four years for you to yeah. get the chance. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I was just lucky. I, I got that chance. And I don't uh, think you were lucky. I think it was hard work. I think that yeah, like, but you, you there's you a need, bit of luck you, maybe you need certain, to certain races, but... Yeah, but I like this summer. I've been seriously lucky w w with getting on, getting into a yard where the horses are flying. You know, it could have easily been his horses weren't. But you had to be so ready well, for know? that opportunity when it came along, and that's the thing. I think, like from from that no. moment forward, is that what you wanted to be? Did you want to be? A no, never. Didn't want to be a jockey. Uh, definitely knew I wanted to be an amateur jockey and and riding races and so on. Uh, wanted to be a vet. Terrible leaving cert, uh, horrendous in school. That was never going to be an option. But I, I always wanted to be a jockey. But I never envisaged myself being able to make a career out of being a, a jockey. You know, it wasn't so until I was. Change? Yeah. It wasn't. It actually wasn't until I was uh, 26, and Shaq Hanlon said to me, "You know, why don't you turn professional and I'll try it." And it worked. And you know, if Shaq um, hadn't said that to you, where would you be now? I think your boyfriend Brian would have been saying that as well, didn't he? Uh, he <laughs> actually, he had a... <laughs> Are you going out with a guy called Brian? <laughs> <laughs> he had a massive say in it, uh, but I didn't want to bring him up again, so... Yeah. <laughs> we have Brian on the line! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... But if, if Shark hadn't said that, would you... Because your, your, your amateur career was plodding along, really going nowhere. Yeah, like... Brian, Brian had said to me too, um, you know, you're That's seven, not a joke, seven, you're a seven pound claimer who, you know, you can claim off those light weights. Uh, you know, why don't you give this a try? And, you know, it was just that a girl had never gone down that road before for their own circumstances. You know, Nina and Katie never needed to. You know, Cheltenham winners, Irish national winners, they were, you know, beating Paddy left, right, and centre in bumpers. So they never needed to. They never needed to do that. But Whereas you were I you did. were pioneer in the sense that there were very very few female professional riders, flat or jumps, and there still are. Yeah, I don't. Know. <laughs> it's, but it's it's it shouldn't be like how many winners did you ride as an amateur? Seven on the track, eleven point of points. And how many winners have you ridden as a bro? Couldn't more, count it. More than that. Yeah. Seventy something this year is that right? Seventy two on over jumps this year. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. Come on. Here you take a bow. Huh? Here you take a bow. <laughs> and she's ridden. I remember being at Tipperary for one of the meetings during the summer, and she rode a gambled on winner for uh, this man's father on the flat, and then she won the big hurdle race the same day. Uh, and I was just like, this is absolutely extraordinary. And stuff like that should be on the news that night that somebody can do that. Not, not to mind that she's a pioneer in terms of female jockeys, that she's mixing flat and jumps and riding five furlong races on Dundalk and then riding a three mile chase the following day. That's, that's incredible for a jockey, for a start. Mm, exactly, exactly. And yeah. I think like racing is one of those rare sports where gender is becoming completely irrelevant. Like. Well, it's the only sport that men and women race on equal footing. It's like the, the, the one thing I will take her up on is that when the French brought in the rule about um, you know, a female allowance, I remember saying it to you and you're like, I would take anything going that would help me. And I was just like, I don't want this to come in at all because I think it, it's almost saying like you're inferior and I don't think you are. But you're saying like I, I spent most of my life chasing Nina and Katie around the bumpers. And so why would you give them an extra four pound? Like, no. And <laughs> kind of what I, I think what I meant was if, if view, they want to give it to me, like I'm going to take it. I'm not going to be like, I don't want your four pounds. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to take it. Like. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> That's definitely how it works. You've got to take whatever's going. Um, in terms of the Dublin Racing Festival, we're going to talk to you guys both a little bit later on about this, but anything in particular, um, Rachel, that you're looking forward to? 
it's it's very early for me to say what I'll what I'll be writing. I'm not sure, um, you know. But it's it's a fantastic two days. Really looking forward to it. Um, you know, high class racing. So I hope I'm there first of all for 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 most of it. And um, you know, it's it's hard to pin down anything. Okay. When how how far out do you kind of know what you are going to be riding on? Uh, earlier on, we were asking Davy what his involvement is. He's like, drive there, get on the horse, get off the horse, go home. Um, how much conversation do you have with trainers about what's coming up? Um, yeah, you, you get a feed off trainers, but you know, you're not marching in and asking them, what am I riding at the weekend? Do you know what I mean? Uh, like I have a really good agent. Yeah, a really good agent in Gary Cribben and he does, he does a lot of that, that work and, and that side of it for me, you know? So technically you don't know 100% what you're riding until after 12 o'clock on a, you know, on, t on a Friday yeah. when the declarations are done for the weekend. You know? Yeah, so you just got to stay in the moment and make sure you're ready no matter what happens. Yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah that's How important is your agent? Oh, massive, yeah, really important. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's half 10 there, declarations are out for the following day or entries are out at 12 and you're riding out somewhere. You know, you can't be on your phone trying to get yourself rise and get yourself sorted. And, you know, he's, he's a really good man to have on your side. Um, How long are you with him? with them since I turned, yeah, yeah. So, so he's seen the whole, almost rags for the story, like? Um, he's been a massive role in it anyway, yeah. Mm. All right, let's go down to the crowd. Emma Doyle is in the crowd, who won her debut race at Dundalk on the 4th of January. That's probably worth a round of applause too. Go on, Emma. Woo! How are you getting on, Emma? How are you doing? I'm really good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, tell us a little bit about that race. So, um... When do you know, because it's, it's a family horse, is that right? So you've kind of been targeting it for a while, I guess. Yeah, um, I hadn't been particularly now because I actually only got my license the day before I rode. I was actually third choice jockey that day. <laughs> Dad just couldn't get anyone else to do the lightweight. So it was, I think it was like 11 o'clock and he went to look and my name wasn't on the registered list of jockeys to ride. But he, he made a quick call to the turf club and I, I made it down for a 12 anyway. <laughs> oh, so the race was a 12? No, 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 uh, the, just you have to have, like, down as to a get jockey. Your license. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. And so uh, you know at that point then that you're going to be riding, and what's that build-up to that race like? Because this is your first race as a registered jockey. Yeah, I guess it was actually a good way that it worked out that I only knew that close beforehand. I didn't have too, too long to worry about it and stress myself out, really. I also had, like, a few pounds to lose <laughs> to get down to A3, but that kind of took my mind off it. All right, so then the, the um, Dundalk... And uh, how long is the race? Uh, it was a mile. Okay, right. So uh, how does the actual race go? A mile is a mile at the dock. I've only learned about this because uh, Johnny keeps telling me, oh, this horse is definitely going to win. And then he doesn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I, I understand a mile in the dock, it doesn't actually matter that much where you're drawn because you have enough time to make up for any it, difficulties. It, no, no, it, it actually does matter. Um, <laughs> Now, now he tells me. Yeah, a mile, a mile is not as relevant as like, because I was actually involved in a horse that ran in that race. And, um, is this a, our race? Uh, possibly. It was the third horse I've been involved in that was well fancied in a race that Northern Surprise actually won. And they were all at Dundalk. Um, and we, our horse was drawn high that night and it didn't exactly help him. But um, Emma was absolutely superb on the winner and it just looked like she'd been there for, for some time. And, um, it she, was a great she looked much better than Rachel in her I first did. winner. Yes, yeah, she did. She <laughs> did. I would say Emma was more precocious maybe than Rachel. Yeah. yeah. I think our after-race interviews were very similar, though. <laughs> yeah. That's how I felt afterwards. <laughs> well, it must be ridiculous. It's like, cause it is, it's not just you riding a random horse. It's a family horse as well. So that's like... You know, it's amazing. Yeah, like I've I've known him his whole life. We've had him since he was a two year old. He's eight now. I know him inside out. I've led him up every day he's ran. So that made it extra special, I think. And they're they're just such a nice family. Like it was like you could not begrudge like uh, her her dad is like just one of these guys you meet in racing. Always has a smile on his face and um, racing. You take the good with the bad. And they were just like uh, they're just a lovely family to be to be associated with. How far out do you know you're going to win? Like, is it close or is it a, a um, I knew when Rory Cleary said well done when I passed the line. Nice. <laughs> I had, turning in, I was like, God, I, I still have a lot here. Like, he's still under me. But the whole way up the straight, I was just like, we're still going. I, I, didn't, I didn't know if I was going to get there because I saw the two were going to go by clear me. But I was just very lucky. He, 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 he also, like, he wasn't, like, all that well fancy. So you probably had a sense of, like, 
I can ride him just to finish his race and, you know, if he wins, it's a bonus. But it was just like, oh, exactly. he hadn't won in some time. Yeah, yeah, he hadn't won in three years. Yeah. Like, I, I knew going out that he was well capable. He hadn't lost any form at home. He's just, after falling out of love with the game a bit, but... If you, if you ride a horse that was 16, 20 to 1, that is an eight year, he's, he's like, if you can get five good years out of a horse, that's good. So he's six, seven years on the go. It's your first ever ride. He's 16, 20 to 1. And it wins. Like that is pretty remarkable. Yeah, it's class. Said, like. It's absolutely class. So, like, what do you? What happens for you now? What to, you know? Your um, ambition le le level can be whatever it wants to be in racing, right? Yeah, I guess I'm just taking it one ride at a time. I've I've had two rides since, and one went well, one not so well. So we just got to see how it goes. Hopefully, I'll just keep improving. I know I have to get a lot stronger and all that, but I hope I can just stay at it for as long as I'm enjoying it. Does, does, does the likes of Rachel kind of prove like something of an ambassador for the likes of you? Oh, 100%. If it wasn't for Rachel, I don't think a lot of girls would be getting into racing now. I was actually so fortunate she was there on the night I was riding. She was great to me. She put, she put my cap on my helmet and everything. <laughs> I mean, I was like her valet. I had to tuck her in properly because <laughs> yeah. your ha anytime anyone has their first ride, what happens is your colours come out and like nobody tells you on your first ride, make sure you pull your colours down so they won't come out. So I did that for her. Yeah, I was, I was well prepared. <laughs> <laughs> That's class. Emma, congratulations. That's a, a great story. Is it, so you. You, when you said one went well, did you win a second race? No, I was third. All right. So you've got a 33% winning record. That's not bad. If you can maintain that for the rest of your life, we're going to hear a lot more about you. Emma, congratulations. Well Thank done. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I know, Rachel, you were kind of like, we're, you know, we're talking about gender and it's like very boring that it always comes up. But when you hear a story like that, you actually realize that you're making a difference, even if you don't want to be making a difference. Or, you know, like it's important. Yeah, look, um, you know, when I started, uh, Nina and Katie were the prevalent ones in the, in the weigh room. Um, you know, I walked into a weigh room where there was no issue made about gender. So that's just the, what I followed on to. Yeah. And uh, look, it was a fantastic night for Emma in, uh, in Dundalk. Um, you know, sh she'll actually take her a while. It'll be next year when she looks back in it, um, you know, when she gets a real taste of what... Uh, how disappointing racing can be, um, but uh, it was a fantastic night, and like she was, she rode so well and was so professional about herself for having her first ride. Yeah, it's it's, it's great in racing that it's not even really talked about that much anymore. So like if one in seven winners at Cheltenham uh, last season was ridden by a female rider, um, one of whom actually basically broke her collarbone and rode a finish and won the race, and it's just like well that's just how it is anymore and. I think it's like it's 50-50 basically in terms of staff and down the line because weights are going to basically weights are going to stop a lot of uh, male riders riding because they're, they're not going to be able to do the weight. I think the percentage of female riders is going to go way, way up in the next few years. Yeah. And it's, you know, Jessica Harrington, what was she like 70-71 when she had her first Gold Cup runner, which won. She had her first winner in the Irish National that year, and this 70, 71 year old, whatever she was, I remember her at Cheltenham because she had her arm in, in, a, in a cast because she'd had a fall skiing. And I'm just like, I don't really care what your gender is, you're amazing. Like, yeah, she's like, going to be training winners at 100. Yeah, yeah, that's just race. I, um, I think the gender thing is gone. Um, I think too much is made of it. Like, Rachel's doing what she's doing, Bryony Frost is riding grade one winners, Lizzie Kelly's riding Cheltenham winners, Nina and Katie being done everything. Uh, you have Josephine Gordon on the flat. Um, Natalie de Soute in France. I don't think it's, it's a thing anymore. And I, ho I hope you're dead right, and I hope that it continues. I want to show you some pictures, Patrick. Um, Christ. Yeah, what the hell's going on here? That's you in he football. He just does this for attention. Is that it? <laughs> just for attention. But, so, uh, these are hurdles, right? Uh, they they yeah, are, yeah. 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 And you're jumping, yeah. you're jumping Eight hurdles. Eight in a mile. There yeah. you go. <clears throat> And it's not just ones. They're, they're different yeah, socks. Yeah. What, we, what shorts are you wearing? I haven't. It's Man United ones. Uh, but uh, I had Barcelona ones before. Uh, went over to I went over to a Glasgow action match, which was brilliant. Too. Did you get the photographer to just say, like, just be five yards away from the hurdle? <laughs> yeah. And just as my kind of, my muscles are shown properly as I jump, but just then take the photo. Yeah, it's, it's, I just, I run the track before the race every day, just A, to see the, see the ground, because I'm in the bumper, so obviously there's been a few races on it, so you can see where the ground's cut up, where it's not cut up, so you can get a fresh strip which is sometimes why you see me going quite wide um and then i like to, i also like to 
it, you lose a half pound or a pound and it, and it just keeps me fit. I used to run a lot as a kid, did community games and all that. Um, What's with the school and just, just kind of see how you're jumping? It's uh, <laughs> just a bit of interest, yeah. yeah. Although, it's a sign I'm get, I think I have to give it up now because my, my left knee is giving me trouble. It's a sign I'm getting old, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and you're 29, I think? 29, yeah. yeah. 29, yeah. Wait till so. you're 30. Yeah. <laughs> I think we vaguely remember, sir. Uh, Johnny, so how much longer will you do this? Are you also like you do it as long as you possibly uh, can? Well, look, my father rode. He was forty. I mean, it, it, it's it's incredible. When he was forty, he rode the bumper winner in Cheltenham. Um, you know, so it's like Gordon Elliott was forty now riding bumper winner in Cheltenham. What was like, the name of the horse? Um, <laughs> well, maybe not exactly like Gordon Elliott now winning in Cheltenham. But like when I said Gordon Elliott, I meant you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, the horse, horse is called Witter Witch, and he, we, he's still at home in the field. Um, he's 20, he was 596, so he's 22 now, 27? I know, um, I did pass maths. And uh, it's actually a great story. So he bought the horse. Um, he'd had one winner in Cheltenham, Tour Traction in 95. He bought this horse at the sales for small money. Um, he won a bumper in Leopardstown at Christmas, he won 20 lengths. And up until then, Willie had always sold horses. Uh, he'd always sold horses to England. That was what he did back then. So he decided this was the horse he was going to be a trainer and not a trader. And he kept, a f I think he might have kept a leg of the horse, sold the rest of the horse for less money than he could have if he sold him to England. Uh, kept the ride on the horse then in Cheltenham instead of letting Richard DeMurray ride him. Um, the plan was to make the running and he missed the start, uh, which was a good, a good, good start. And, uh, but the horse still won. And um, off the back of that, he got Archie Leary to buy Florida Pearl and... Right. So without Woodrow Witch, the whole story would be a lot different. It's, it's mad the age of Rosso. I think Ruby is 39, maybe. Yeah. So Ruby uh, has been, whether he's been selective or Willie's been selective, Ruby hasn't ridden that much, certainly, over fences this season. And when he won the Tiestes today, he gave the horse a big hug after the race. And it was this real moment where it's like, you know, this guy knows that he is getting on. And these, these moments are actually just mean so much to him. And then when he won the beginner's chase in Silius Emery, Patrick McCann of the Racing Post just captured this beautiful moment where he kind of just, he, he looked over and as he was getting off the horse, he's just like, yeah, I remember but this feeling. Ruby's like a kid, isn't he? A like kid, in yeah. the gallops in the morning, Ruby's like, he's like he's 18 again. Like yeah. he just has that enthusiasm. He, he just loves, he just loves the game. Like, because he knows that he, he probably doesn't have that long left, maybe a few years. Maybe, but he, he just yeah. loves the game anyway. Like yeah. just, his, he, his enthusiasm for it is unbelievable. He just like, has that fire. He was coming back from injury one day. I think it was his first morning back riding out, and he was like a kid at Christmas. Like yeah. he, he was riding a bit of work, and like he just hadn't you know, ridden a bit of work in a long time, and he was genuinely buzzing after Sometimes it. Sometimes like, if he wasn't Ruby Walsh, she'd be like, a dose bag. Shut up, will you? <laughs> like, you know, like. Racing's the only sport where you break your leg and you rush to come back for Cheltenham, you do well, and the following day you break your leg again, and people just go, that's it, yeah. Yeah, grand, yeah. When, when are you back? Yeah, but also the riding out thing is like, you, there's no, there's, there's, I mean, there are superstars in your sport, but there's no prima donnas. Everybody comes and rides out and works the horses. And I'd say if there were like a prima donna in the weighing room, like he would just, he would be so ostracized by the rest of them, just like get over yourself. Like this is, it doesn't work in this game. Yeah, okay. We're going to go through the card in just a couple of minutes' time, but we are here tonight, of course, with thanks to the Dublin Racing Festival taking place at Leopardstown Racecourse on Saturday the 2nd and Sunday the 3rd of February. It's going to be 15 races, 8 grade 1s, and 1.8 million in prize money. You can book your tickets now at leopardstown.com. And I meant to say earlier, thanks to our friends in Touchline Productions for giving us the clip from... Um, who, who found the clip of the pony race? Is it, do you have it in the house? Or? Uh, my mum had it on a, on a video for... Um she got to put onto a DVD a while ago, yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Are there loads more of those that you know you can stick up on YouTube and? No, there's only one. That's the only you've seen it all. <laughs> well, listen, congratulations! It's been a brilliant season so far for Rachel Blackman. Best of luck with everything. Patrick's going to stay with us as we go through the card and pick some winners. John Duggan is standing by as well. We're going to be right back after these.